Building a tiny house is one thing, but once it's built, where do you put it? This week we're going to dive into the topic of how you can find a parking spot for your tiny house. Over the years, we have visited hundreds of tiny houses, and I'm often really amazed at some of the truly incredible parking spaces that people have found for their tiny homes. For a lot of people starting out on their tiny house journey though, finding a parking spot can be one of the most stressful elements. So how do people do it? The truth is that how easy it is to find a parking spot depends a lot on your location. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more difficult to find a place to park a tiny house in central New York than it is in rural Australia. The more flexible you are with your location, the easier it will be to find a place to park your home. That being said, we have visited many tiny houses which have found incredible parking spaces on the outskirts of major cities. You may just have to work a little bit harder to find that perfect spot. One of the most common ways of finding a parking spot is to advertise that you're looking for one. People post listings on websites such as Craigslist or community groups such as Facebook with a little bit of information about themselves, their home, and what they're looking for in a parking spot. We posted on just heaps of Facebook pages, just local community boards and got some offers. And we're quite lucky to go and view quite a few. And then we got this offer. I just couldn't say no. <laughs> yeah, we just kind yeah. of kept our radius quite far, just to give ourselves lots of options to get the land that we did really mm. want. And uh, the searching stopped when we saw this one. <laughs> <laughs> Some people even choose a location they would love to park in and do mailbox drops. And the parking space that you found for your home here as well, fantastic views. Yeah, we feel pretty fortunate actually. We were told, and it turned out to be true, that land, finding a place to park, would be the hardest part, mm. or one of the hardest parts of the tiny house journey, and it proved to be true in our case as well. We checked out all the Facebook groups, a lot of land share websites, and we, we sort of checked out everything. Um, but ultimately what did it for us was mailbox drops. We just made up a flyer, and we printed hundreds and hundreds of them off, and after about 200 letterbox drops, uh, the landowner contacted us and said, we'd love to have you on the land, and it's only about a 20 minute drive to Auckland City from here, which is amazing, frankly, and we're still in West Auckland, which we love, and based on your channel, it looks like a lot of tiny houses in Auckland are actually in West Auckland. It seems like a, a tiny house metropolis. <laughs> this is the hot spot. There's no question about that. <laughs> With the recent growth of the tiny house movement, you'll often be really surprised at the number of landowners who are very keen to have a tiny house parked up with them. So we looked on the internet, uh, we put a little ad, did a nice cute picture with like oh, yeah. us as a family looking for a spot for our tiny house. Uh, and we got some offers and this place was just fed really right um, because of all the trees and just the general feel of the land. And we are sharing um, a part of the veggie garden as well. So that's really nice too. It's kind of tiny community feel that we can, yeah. with our landlord, just have little project on the land and, uh, and learn stuff from gardening and planting and stuff. So that's really cool. As the tiny house movement grows, there are also great websites starting up such as Landshare in New Zealand, which specialize in connecting tiny house owners with landowners. And I cannot believe your parking spot. How did you find this place? Well, you've got it on the best there, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we went on a website called Landshare, which is a New Zealand website where people with an empty patch of land can go on and post their land. And then people with tiny houses or mobile homes or things can go on and message them through that. What a great resource. Yeah, lucky to find that one. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in North America, we've also noticed a huge number of tiny houses that have found their homes in RV parks. Now, you're parked up here in an RV park, and one of the really interesting things to me about this is that this park is actually filled with tiny houses. It yes. is. Yeah, that was a big draw for us. Out of the parks that we toured, to choose this one is, we had felt a sense of community coming here with all the different tiny homes, and uh, it's nice to have like-minded people close by. And it's a great location, you know, as far as proximity to work and, you know, restaurants and just highway access. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it really shows as well that the tiny house movement is alive and well here in Austin. Especially in Austin um, yeah. and throughout the country, I think, for that matter. But you know, here there's multiple tiny home communities mm -hmm. and um, it's just growing, you know, day by day. Don't forget about your personal connections. It always pays to ask around your friends or friends of friends to see if there's anyone who likes the idea of having a tiny house parked in their backyard. 
the parking spot that you've got here really is something quite special because you're so close to the beach and then you're in a suburban area, but it's like you're in this little woodland paradise back here. It's seriously amazing. So I'm actually at the bottom of a friend's property and they were just parking their cars here. And, Crazy. And exactly, right? And I looked at it, I was like, this would be amazing for a tiny house. And she was like, you wouldn't want to live there, there are mosquitoes. And so what I actually did is, is I drew up this ad, right? And I said to her, I was like, oh, I just found this on the internet, you know, close to the beach, surrounded by nature, perfect for a tiny house. And I showed her and she was like, that sounds amazing. You should go for it. I was like, this is your place. <laughs> and she was like, okay, you can do it. But yeah, I mean, the brilliant thing about this place, I think, is because her land here is actually zoned to be able to put three houses. But if you were to do that, you'd have to chop down all these beautiful trees. Whereas we were able to just slide in with the tiny house and we only cut down one. Not all tiny houses pay rent for their parking spots. Farms and lifestyle properties require a lot of labor and people are sometimes offered a tiny house parking spot in exchange for a few hours helping on the property each week. Some jobs even come with a parking spot for a tiny house. So how I came to be here is I was looking for two things. is one, somewhere to site my house and also to find a bit of part-time work. And it just sort of seemed to be the best of both worlds. I've had previous farming experience and these guys were looking for someone part-time, do some casual work on the farm. And so it's worked out really well. It's worked out for both of us. I've got a, a site on a farm, which I enjoy. I like being rural. and and I've got work here and from the farmer's point of view I've turned up with my own accommodation so it's worked well. One of the things that can greatly help when it comes to finding a dream tiny house parking spot is going off the grid. Building an off the grid home means that your parking spot doesn't need access to services such as power and water which dramatically opens up your options as to where you can park your home. This tiny house is completely off the grid isn't it? Yeah so I have a water connection to a water tank but um electricity I've got solar and gas so completely off grid for electricity. That definitely makes it a lot easier when it comes to finding a parking spot doesn't it? Yeah it sure does. I can plug in if I need to but one of the things I wanted to have was just the flexibility of being able to move if I needed to and so I've gone as off grid as I can. Along these lines one other thing that can really help you to find a great parking spot is to build a beautiful home. You live in it, but the rest of the world looks at it. The more attractive you can make your home, the more willing a landowner will be to share space with you. One of the most common situations that we see, especially amongst younger tiny house builders, is situating their homes on family land. Unfortunately, I see quite a bit of negativity surrounding this, but personally, multi-generational living is something that I would love to see being more normalized in our culture. Especially in the West, we have been so conditioned towards individualism that we easily forget that as humans we are tribal and being able to stick together and share resources can be extremely beneficial. So this property is actually my parents and so we wanted to be on here to sort of help my mum and dad out because my mum fell terminally ill with cancer. So for us it was just great to be able to be close and unfortunately we couldn't get the house on here before mum passed but we were able to be here to support dad and which is a real, really important for us, eh? Yeah, it is. And it was something that we could afford, but at the same time, we really liked the idea of it, eh? Yeah, and it's so close to Kerry Kerry, like we love where we live. We can walk into town, we can walk our daughter to her daycare, but then we have the illusion of being in the country as well, <laughs> which is important. Yeah, and how amazing that you're actually able to be here and share the property with your father, mm. being close and being able to help him out. That must be so special for you. Mm. Oh, it totally is, you know. I mean, as, as a son, being able to provide a little bit for dad and at the same time be able to be there for support, you know, during emotional times. I mean, too often us Kiwi blokes, you know, we're sort of trying to act hard and tough and sort of no, show no emotion. Yeah. But to be able to be here for when it does hit the fan, it was really important. Now, I understand that not everyone is fortunate enough to have family land or even good family relationships, but for those that do, it's lovely to be able to be close together. So we're very fortunate. Uh, this is family land. It's mum and dad's property. So uh, we're very lucky to have this little spot to call home the tiny house. This actually isn't its final resting place. It's going to move a little bit in the not too distant future. But uh, yeah, being in here surrounded by the trees and, and in the environment here, we're, we're very fortunate. How much land do you have here? Uh, it's about 260 acres in total. Wow. And for your parents, being able to have you here to help manage that must be an essential part of the equation for them. It most definitely is. They get just as much out of it as we do. We're really excited about that opportunity as well to help them look after it. We've got sort of lots of plans to do a lot of bush regeneration and whatnot here. So 
yeah, it's a great opportunity for them and, and for us. So yeah, it works beautifully. For parents with young children, having nanny and granddad just across the way can be extremely useful. And likewise, as our parents age, it's lovely to be in close proximity to lend a helping hand when they need it. I didn't want to invest in a property. So when my daughter suggested a tiny house, I was very receptive. And I am so thrilled that I jumped at that idea and being close to my family is very important. The grandchildren and great-grandchildren, they grow so quick. So to have those childhood years and to have them know their grandmother, I think it's very important to me and I think it is important to them. It is all important being close to family. It's just a dream which without the wee tiny house I couldn't have had. For those that don't have access to multi-generational family living, another great thing to try and seek out is community. Recently we've seen a huge upsurge in communal land ownership and the foundation of intentional communities, and tiny houses are a fantastic fit for this. So living in community for the first couple of years was quite challenging for me, because we were all trying to do everything together and it was almost like marrying each other because uh, we all had young kids at that time and now I think we're at a point where we're starting to really complement each other and we're doing things that we love but not trying to do everything. Yeah, what becomes obvious is that we're not used to, well yeah. in, in my case, not really used to cooperating so intimately with other people. So mm -hmm. the first thing to get over was like, or to learn was a lot of compromise. And so you can often, if you can keep the communication channels open, you can often come up with a solution to have everyone's needs met that an individual mightn't have thought of. And I like to think of it in terms of games, like how can we find a win-win game where we all we all get our needs met and be a bit light with it as well. Like none of us are experts in anything, so a lot of it's just being a bit playful and you know having the courage to just try things out and be okay with mistakes and learn learn from them, see them as opportunities rather than something's gone wrong. <laughs> and I think we're all up for that. Another thing which I think is a really untapped resource is commercial land. And then the parking space. This <laughs> is really something different, huh? <laughs> it is. It is. I've mixed a couple of different worlds here with sort of an industrial zone uh, meets a little bit of a wooded nook. And, uh, you know, it's great. I, I love the sort of the busyness of people working around me, but also have my own space. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, how yeah. did you find this place? Well, um, I was introduced to the owner of this company here and uh, I was introduced to him by a friend on another property and he said, hey, I've got a lot up there and if you want to come, you're welcome to. And so we met, we got on well and here I am. So I'm pretty fresh into the property, only about a, yeah, a week or so here. So Yeah, so, fantastic. Yeah. And sometimes when you're looking for the perfect parking spot, it really pays to think outside the box. You found a super interesting parking spot for this place, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Uh, so we're actually parked up on a nudist club. And how did you come to be living at a nudist club? Uh, that's a bit of a story. So we built a house quite far away from here and um, then I got a job in Auckland. And coming from the Netherlands originally, I kind of wanted to live in nature and have that kind of experience because uh, that was quite unique to us. So what I did is I put lots of flyers and post boxes, I think maybe all up 200 or so. And one of the replies that we got was from this nudist club that really needed a little bit of extra income to pay for the electricity. Yeah, so that's uh, why we came to look here. It was actually amazing, really. The yeah. spot is fantastic. But you're not nudist though, are you? No, no. we're not nudist. No, not ourselves. No. So how do you find actually living at a nudist club then? Uh, it's pretty chill. Like, obviously the spot that we have here mm. is pretty private, so we actually don't really see the nudists. And because nudism is kind of out of fashion these days, kind of Sunday's their one day that they come, and then every so often during the week. But otherwise, we get the, get the place to ourselves. Surely being nude is one of those things that can never go out of fashion, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> so... Being here at the Nudist Club though, I mean one of the great things about that is that you must have access to all of their infrastructure. Yeah, so yeah. they've got a pool, a spa pool, a sauna, a clubhouse, tennis court, big lawns, swings and stuff. But yeah, we can use all of that whenever we like, so it's pretty cool. Of course, one of the best things about a tiny house is that it's on wheels and can be moved whenever you like. 
Some tiny houses stay for years, some for a season, and some are constantly on the move. So many tiny houses that get built now are just built to be parked up in one spot and never take advantage of the fact that they're on wheels. But you certainly cannot say that about this house, can you? Absolutely not. It's been two years of pretty much continuous travel, 29 states and one Canadian province now. For many, tiny house ownership can also be a great stepping stone into purchasing land. So what does the future hold for you both now? Yeah, so to be completely <laughs> transparent, yes, we're having a baby, and yes, we're almost done paying this off. So our intentions now are to, we're actually under contract buying a house right now, about 15 miles away, with three acres of property, and our intentions are to bring this with us and uh, use it as a guest home. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. That is so cool. Thank you. I think one of the things that's just so good about that story is, it shows that a tiny house like this really is an investment, Yes. right? It's something that serves you for a period of your life. And when your family outgrows the space, it still is a tangible asset that can keep giving back to you. Absolutely. There are so many ways that we're excited to use the tiny home for a guest space, for a home office. It is an asset. It's totally an investment. And so we're excited that it's gonna stay in our family and that that investment is gonna grow with us and it's honestly gonna help us pay the mortgage. Now, let's talk cost. When it comes to the cost of a tiny house parking spot, this can vary greatly depending on location and amenities. However, we usually see the cost range anywhere between $50 and $150 per week. Another factor to consider is the legality of tiny homes in your area. As the tiny house movement grows, more and more places have legalized tiny house living. In other areas, it pays to fly under the radar. We plan to do another more in-depth video regarding this in the future. So, there you have it. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you're scared of starting your tiny house journey because you don't have a parking spot lined up yet, don't be. There are lots of options out there and the list is always growing. So, have a little faith and follow your tiny house dreams. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping to support our channel. Skillshare is an incredible online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills and deepen your existing passions. One of the best things about Skillshare is the huge variety in things you're able to learn. No matter what you're interested in, chances are Skillshare has a course for you. I really love photography, but I don't always have my camera with me, so I've been taking a course by Dale McManus all about iPhone photography, so I can always get a good shot whether I have my camera with me or not. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description of this video will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can get your learning journey started. So click the link in the description of this video and start learning a new skill today.